Mr Acting Deputy President, I'd also like to take this opportunity to, tonight to talk about the ongoing and life-changing impact on people in our community affected by brain tumours, including patients and their carers, families, friends and colleagues. I also acknowledge the significant cost to the community and the economy of these diseases, primarily through premature death from brain tumours and brain cancer, particularly and heartbreakingly the deaths of children. Over the last 35 years, while survival rates for many cancers have improved, survival for brain cancer has shown no significant improvement. Five-year survival for brain cancer remains stubbornly low at 22 per cent. Cancer Australia estimated that in 2020, 1,879 new brain cancer diagnoses would occur. That is more than five people in this country being diagnosed with brain cancer, not including non-malignant tumours, every day. For that same year, it was estimated that 1,518 people would die from a malignant brain tumour, and that is, on average, more than four people dying a day, every day. Distressingly, brain cancer was the leading cause of cancer-related death in Australian children between the ages of 0 and 14 years in 2019. And whilst many childhood cancers have seen excellent increases in overall survival, some childhood brain cancers, such as diffuse intrinsic pontine gliloma, or DIPG, remain terminal on diagnosis, with children surviving an average of only nine months from their diagnosis. This is not acceptable, and we do need to do more as a country. The cost of brain cancer is more than the suffering and grief of those affected by it. Through this cost, uh, though this cost is more than we would want anyone in our community to bear, financially brain cancer costs more per person than any other cancer because it's highly debilitating, affects people in their prime and often means family members can't work if they become carers. It is the cancer with the highest total burden of disease. On the 28th of November 2017, the Senate Select Committee into Funding for Research into Cancers with Low Survival Rates handed down its report. I and seven other senators sat on this Select Committee with Senator Katrina Billick sitting as chair. And many in this place will know that in March 2008, Senator Billick had two benign brain tumours removed. In February this year, our colleague, Senator Billick, announced she had been diagnosed with a further brain tumour, a slow-growing meningioma. She's advised that it does not pose a serious threat to her health, and she's taking a short leave of absence from parliament to undertake treatment. And Senator Billick, uh, if you're listening, our love and thoughts go with you. Yeah. It's heartening to know that Senator Billick does not currently face a serious threat, but she is incredibly courageous and deeply passionate about wanting to see this disastrous disease treated more seriously in Australia and in particular by the Australian Parliament. The Senate Select Committee into Funding for Research into Cancers with Low Survival Rates made 25 recommendations in its report. On 16 November 2018, the government provided its response to the report. Of the 25 recommendations, 10 were simply noted, 8 were supported in principle, 5 were supported and 2 were deemed to be the responsibilities of the states. Most disappointingly, recommendation 24, that the federal, state and territory governments develop and implement a comprehensive Australia-wide strategy to increase five-year survival rates for low survival rate uh, cancers to about 50 per cent by 2027 was only noted. While the bra brain cancer mission of doubling survival rates in 10 years by 2027 was welcome, this did not aim as high as the committee had recommended. Most importantly, I am aware that brain tumour patients, their carers, families and friends had hoped for more support for the report's recommendations. If carried through, the recommendations have the potential to improve quality of life reduce financial burden and ultimately, and most critically, extend and save the lives of brain tumour patients. I celebrate these improvements as little as they are and 
And I hope that very soon Australians facing brain cancer and those who love them can also have vastly improved survival rates and the chance for more of them to live long, healthy and productive lives in our community. We've seen improved survival rates in other cancers, notably, for example, the five-year survival rate of prostate cancer has increased from 60 per cent to more than 90 per cent.